Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a family portrait and we haven't done one of these in a long time and the reason is I've pretty much run through all of the big brands that I have enough bottles to fill up a family portrait all by themselves. So we've already done the house of Guerlain, we've done Creed, we've done Amouage, we've done Roja, Hermes, on and on and on, Chanel, YSL, so forth and so on. So now, um, these family portraits are basically going to be done in a way where we're going to start combining some of the houses that I only have maybe a couple fragrances in, um, and we're going to combine them so that, you know, we can talk about the fragrances and I can kind of give you a high-level overview. You can get an idea of what my collection looks like, and even if I only have one, two, three fragrances, uh, we can do family portraits where I can talk about the house a little bit and uh, show you guys kind of what I went for. And then ultimately, the goal is that I will be doing individual reviews on each one of these. But um, before we do that, um, I wanted to talk about, well, let me tell you the three houses first, I guess. So we've got the house of Ormond Jane, we've got the house of Parfums de Marly, and we've got the house of Diptyque. So three niche houses, okay? Three niche brands. Uh, a lot of people in the fragrance community kind of hate on houses like Parfum de Marly because they're a little bit more mainstream. They're not really as niche. They're not as, um, you know, they're not as maybe intricate as some of the other niche houses. The they're, they're a little bit more starter niche, if you will. But I still think it's worth talking about them and, you know, uh, showing you some of the things that I bought, which, you know, these are mainstream. And so this may not be for everybody. This may be for someone who's a little bit less experienced and kind of starting down the route of getting their nose on something different than just Blue de Chanel or Sauvage. Um, but then there's others in here from the House of Diptyque and so on, which I think are a little bit more geared towards somebody, um, who has a palette that smelled more, you know, stuff than just what's at the local Macy's counter or something. But before we do that, I want to talk about scent of the day. And I also want to talk about my scent of the night yesterday because I almost feel, let me grab my microfiber cloth so all the bottles are fingerprint free. I almost feel like I did a real injustice to this fa fragrance. Justice must be served and um, I feel like I really let this fragrance down because I did a this is not a top 10 fragrance on the note of vetiver recently and this fragrance got left out. I, I said that you know I smelled it I didn't like it as much. I, I preferred the Alex Strem and I preferred the sport version and that's the original Ancre Noir. Okay, this is the original Ancre Noir. Um, just the regular Ancre Noir from 2006. Um, and I didn't own a bottle of this because when, you know, years and years ago when I first decided which bottles I was going to buy, I left this out because I thought, you know, the extreme version, which was newer at the time, I thought is better. Uh, and... You know, I thought I didn't like vetiver as a note in and of itself. And this is a vetiver perfume through and through. And I paid $30 for this. You saw it in my unboxing. Well, you haven't seen the bottle yet, but you saw the um, the box in one of my unboxing videos a couple days back. And I opened it and I wore it to bed last night. And let me tell you, uh, I, I was completely blown away by this. It's not as it's not what I remember, and that just goes to show that you know sometimes your um, the way that the brain recognizes smell can completely change as experience has grown. So when I smelled this, whatever it was, four years ago, uh, three years ago, whenever I decided to make my Ancre Noir purchases because I bought them both around the same time. Um, and I think the Alex Trem was pretty new then. It was only a year or two old. Uh, and so, you know, this fragrance got pushed aside and then I'm smelling it again to, uh, last night and I'm thinking, wow, it's so smoky. It's so deep. It's so, um, 
you know, it's so complex. The, the note of vetiver can be a, a beautiful fragrance in and of itself. Forget adding any notes to it. And what Nat Nathalie Lorson did here is she took cypress, she took bourbon vetiver, Haitian vetiver, uh, uh, vetiver acetate, which you're a rose who's a aspiring perfumer and I would consider a friend in the perfume industry, basically told me that uh, uh, vetiveral acetate is one of the most important ingredients that a perfumer can have. So she took this compound of vetiver, if you will, and mixed it with her classic musk, which she loves to use, along with, I smell a um, pepper note, which is not listed, but she loves mixing pepper and musk, and she's done it over and over again to much success. She did it with um, graphite from, from Montana. That's a cheapie that you could definitely take a look at. Just watch my Nathalie Lorson video. And you'll see, and, and it's a shame that this got left off of her video um, because it's one of the best bang for your buck vetivers you can get. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm a little disappointed in myself that uh, I didn't realize, you know, what this was at the time. But that comes with experience. And um, I, I, I went for the Alex Strem first and then the Sport. And I love them both, but I would say I, I equally love this one as much. As far as bang for your buck goes, you can get 100 ml. I, I paid $30 for this at Discounters. New, this is actually over $100 if you pay retail. Don't don't pay retail for Ancre Noir. Um, and so you could get all three of these. You can get the Sport the Alex Drem and this for under $100 at Discounters. That is an unbelievable value for 300 ml worth of juice. So I just wanted to touch on that. I wore it to bed last night and I was I was amazed. So I am a big enough man to say, you know what? I said I wasn't enough a fan of this, but testing it again, I really, really like it. And as far as like starting a collection goes, you cannot go wrong. I don't think you can get a better vetiver, even if you went and bought Creed's and Roja's and Ormond Jane and, and Diptyque's Vetiverio. And even if you went and bought niche vetivers, I don't know if you can really get better vetiver than the Ancre Noir series. It is amazing value for money. Okay, let's talk about my scent of the day. So in Texas today, it actually cooled off. It was 80 degrees yesterday and it's going to sleet tonight. That's Texas weather for you. Um, but this is a fragrance by Aramis, and it's called Tobacco Reserve. And Tobacco Reserve is a fragrance that is very unfortunately discontinued. Um, and I say unfortunately discontinued because this is one of my favorite tobacco fragrances of all time. And... You can still get it for a respectable price, I believe, but prices are starting to go up. Uh, and you can see, I mean, I've made a, a pretty decent dent in this bottle. Um, this is done by a, uh, a a man who has done some amazing fragrances. So this is done by uh, Edouard Fleischier. He did Havana Reserve for Aramis back in the 90s. He also did Davidoff Davidoff in 84. He did Poison for Dior in 85. Uh, he did Un Rose uh, and Lise Mediterrani for uh, Frederick Mall. He did um, Montana Parfum Dome for the House of Montana from 89, which is also a gorgeous tobacco fragrance. Uh, so he has done some top-notch fragrances. And he hasn't done anything for a long time, but this fragrance right here is one of my favorite tobacco fragrances because, as you will know, I don't like sweet fragrances for the most part. And this is one where I think Fragrantica got it wrong. If you look at the main accords, it's tobacco, aromatic, and then sweet. I disagree. I don't get hardly any sweetness from this. There is Tonka that is listed in the base where it does add just a touch of sweetness. Also, there's black currant, so it's a fruity tobacco. And when you first spray, what you actually get is you get something that feels like it's going to be a very damp, wet tobacco. 
But what happens is that only lasts for here. Let me give you guys a fresh spray. The sprayer on this is shite, by the way. Um, can you see that? So two sprays and... Okay, let me let this settle down for a second. So... What I love about it is when you first spray, you get this very aromatic from the clary sage and the nutmeg mixing together. And you instantly get this tobacco that feels like it's going to be a very damp, wet, moist tobacco. Like you could just, you know, take your hands and just wring out the wetness. But all of a sudden it flips instantly. Five, ten seconds in it flips and it turns into this extremely bone dry, very bone dry, but creamy tobacco scent. The black currant adds a touch of fruitiness, okay? But it's not the main accord. Fruitiness to me is not the main accord. The tobacco is the star of the show. And you kind of get all aspects of the tobacco. You get this very fine tobacco, but dry, okay? And remember, it stays dry. And there's almost no sweetness to my nose. Some people say it's sweet. I don't think it's sweet at all. I have fragrances. Some of the comparisons on here are insane. Like, um, uh, Cher Guy is a comparison. Um, another comparison that just made me want to fall out of my chair on Fragrantica is Sweet Tobacco Spirits, 1821 Man-Made Sweet Tobacco Spirits, which I own. And that's one of the sweetest, most disgusting fragrances I've ever smelled because it is so sweet to me, I can't wear it. Um, this is the exact opposite of that fragrance because it stays dry. There's just a touch of tonka to add maybe the slightest bit of sweetness, but it's it's very dry, it's very aromatic. This would smell amazing on a professional man. I would easily wear this to work. Um, I would, you could really wear this anywhere. You, you could wear this daytime, nighttime. Um, some say it smells like eau de beau from uh, L'Occitane, which I think is discontinued. I've never smelled that fragrance, by the way. Um, but Aramis Tobacco Reserve also has this oak moss in the base, and it has this powdery orisness. So there's this creaminess from what I think is a mixture of the aromatic notes, like clary sage and nutmeg, mixing with oris for the powderiness. That gives a bit of creaminess, even though it stays bone dry. And it just gives off this, um, it gives off this uh, very, um, almost like uh, refined, you know, like someone that has extremely good taste. Doesn't necessarily follow the trend, but has amazing taste. Because you could easily go wear tobacco vanille or whatever. You could wear some of the fragrances coming up. There's a tobacco fragrance coming up that's uh, very popular. But um, with this, you just get this. You get a, something that kind of goes against the grain, if you will. And I love that about this fragrance. And when you want just an out-and-out out tobacco, you know, and this is a green tobacco too, because you get some of the leaf. You get this tobacco leaf type feel as well. So you get a very green, dry, herbal tobacco. Beautiful. If you're a tobacco lover like I am, which tobacco is one of my favorite notes, second maybe only to leather, um, you have to give this a try. It is absolutely amazing. Okay, now let's talk about the family portrait. And again, some of you might look at these and go, I cannot believe you own these type of scents. But... Um, you have to understand that when you're going through a fragrance journey, sometimes you nothing, not everything has to be insane, niche, complex. Sometimes you want something like this. And we're going to start with what Parfumo calls the, the number two most popular scent in men's perfumery right now. Okay, I don't know how they rank these, but they do. And that is Leighton by Parfums de Marly. Now, Leighton is a pure compliment. If you care about compliments, you have to own Leighton. I could care less, honestly, about compliments. Um, but I own it because it's a very simple wear. And believe it or not, I usually wear this in the summer. Most people talk about wearing it in the winter. This is a summer fragrance for me. Uh, because it has this fruitiness, this freshness of lavender. 
Um, there's, there's an apple note. So if you take the, probably the number one most popular scent, according to um, Parfumo, I would think is Aventus. And while they don't smell the same, they're in the same category. Aventus uses this pineapple-y, you know, birch thing. Uh, Layton uses this apple, lavender, um, cardamom thing. And there's also vanilla to make it kind of sweet and mass appealing. The woods are probably the star of the show because you get this, um, you get this like guyac wood, uh, but it doesn't smell like barbecue. Don't think, you know, heavy guyac wood. The guyac wood is very well blended with this uh, sandalwood note. So nothing in here is challenging. If you've only smelled fragrances like um, Blue, de, Blue de Chanel, uh, Sauvage, Eros, you know, this is a good starter niche to maybe get your nose on. Um, just because of the the mass appealing blend. Now, some people will say a fragrance like this should not be going for $280 for 75 ml or whatever they're selling these for nowadays. Um, but you know, it's a it's a it's a niche quality juice because of the fact that Parfum de Marly is a niche house. They don't sell clothes or anything like that. They only sell perfume. Uh, so it's a niche house. Does that mean it's better than a fragrance like this, Aramis Tobacco Reserve? No, absolutely not. For me, I think I get more pleasure actually wearing Aramis Tobacco Reserve, hands down. Even though this costs, uh, especially at retail initially, this costs four or five, six times as much. Um, but as far as the average person, which one would the average person just choose if they just smelled one and smelled the other? They would probably all choose Layton. So if you just want an easy, dumb reach, there you go. There's Layton. Okay, now we're going to move on to the tobacco scent that I have from Parfums de Marly. Again, 75 ml bottle. And this is these are the only two Parfum de Marly's that I own. The only two that I think are worth owning. I didn't really enjoy Pegasus or any of the other ones that I've, that I've tried. Um, this is Herod. And Herod is kind of like this you know, Hall of Fame tobacco scent. When you mention tobaccos, you mention Cher Guy, for me anyways, um, you would mention Aramis Tobacco Reserve, and uh, there's a, a bunch of others, Tobacco Vini, Tobacco Oud, all this other stuff that you could mention with tobacco, but Herod always kind of gets brought up. The problem with Herod, and there's good and there's bad with this fragrance, um, the bad is that it's sweet. So if you compare these two, okay, this is much more bone dry. I enjoy the tobacco note in this actually much more, believe it or not, than this. This is much sweeter. Um, this does have a note that I really love, and that's Cipriol oil, uh, which I think Cipriol is used better in fragrances like Promise, and it's used better in, in fragrances like uh, Journey Man from Amouage. But there is a Cipriol note here, which I like, but it's way in the background. I don't get a huge dose of Cipriol. What I get a huge dose of is the synthetics, the ISOE Super, the fake cedar, the, you know, all the other stuff that they're using to really push and project, because that's what this brand's all about. It's all about everyone smelling you, you know, getting a compliment. Um, it's almost like if you were a 20-something year old and you like to go to the clubs, but you don't want to wear... Eros, you want to wear a niche fragrance, these are the fragrances that, that, you, would, that you would buy and wear. Um, so for me, they're not an everyday wear because I can't wear this stuff every day. It just It gives me a headache. Um, but I can appreciate the blend, and sometimes you spray this, and it smells really good. Um, especially on cold days. You know, it has this incense, and the note that it has that really kind of makes it stand out is what's called osmanthus, which osmanthus is a flower that actually gives off this nectarine peach type smell. Um, and then there's also labdanum in this, which I love labdanum, but the vanilla and the ISOE just make it too sweet. If, if, if they made, if Herod was made for me, they would tone the sweetness way, way down. Um, and amp up some of the other things I love, like the Cipriol, the incense, the tobacco, and the labdanum, and tone the vanilla down. But it's a mass appealing tobacco, okay? So, you know, it's, um, 
I'm glad to have it. When's the last time I even wore it? I couldn't even tell you. It Probably a year ago. Uh, probably last winter, but there you go. Uh, it's in the collection. It's there as a reference piece. Okay, now we're going to move on to the house of Diptyque. And I have four Diptyque fragrances for you. So two Parfum de Marlies, four Diptyques. And again, we're just kind of aggregating these family portraits together because only showing two Parfum de Marlies just don't, they don't do it for me on a video. My, my video times have to be longer, as you guys know. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is a fragrance called Volutes. Speaking of tobacco fragrances, this is called Volutes. And this is a 50 ml EDT that I scored. Um, and I believe the EDTs are discontinued. Correct me if you know. Um, but Volutes is very often compared to one of my favorite fragrances of all time, and that fragrance is called Chergui. Volutes and Chergui are cousins, if you will. And the reason is they both have tobacco, they both have hay, and they both have honey. Now, Volutes adds a couple notes. It adds Immortel, which Chergui does not have, and it adds dried fruits. And by the way, the artwork on the back of the um, Diptyque bottles are absolutely beautiful. And if you don't know, um, Diptyque, um, they're, they're a candle brand, uh, and they're, they're very well known for their candles. And when they do their fragrances, if it's a white label, it's an EDT. If it's a black label, like I'll show you on the next one, it's an EDP. So that's an easy way to distinguish if you're buying an EDT or an EDP. And, and Diptyque is one of those brands very similar to Guerlain, actually, where I almost prefer the EDTs sometimes because I feel like they breathe a little bit more. There's, they're a little bit more. They're not as, you know, dense and compact. Um, but this has a beautiful honey note. You know I'm a sucker for honey. Um, and sometimes when I get on a kick, like now that I wore Tobacco Reserve today, and I'm loving every second of this. Um, I'll probably wear one of these tobacco fragrances tomorrow since I'm on a tobacco kick. Um, and, you know, Volutes was done a decade ago by Fab Fabrice Pelligran, who will make my perfumer's portfolio list one day soon. Um, and there's what I like about Volutes is once it gets to the dry down, you really get into these resinous type notes. So you get into the Benzoin, Apopanax, Myrrh, Styrax, notes that I really love and also work well in winter. So that is uh, Volutes. And then we're going to go on to a patchouli fragrance. And this is a fragrance that I have in a 75 ml bottle. So the first was a 50. This is an example of the black EDP label I was telling you about. And this is Tempo. Look at the artwork there. Can you see that? You see the psychedelic looking mushrooms and um, crazy looking cat and just very 1960s patchouli. Um, the back's even more crazy. It's got this uh, volcano erupting thing. Can't get rid of that glare for some reason today. Yeah, it's got this crazy snake running through the volcano erupting into the air. Um, crazy 1970s, 60s, 70s patchouli artwork. And I think that's what they were going for because this is out and out a patchouli fragrance. So if you're a patchouli lover, which I am, um, this is one to put on your list. I actually really like this. Um, the, the thing that I think puts some people off is there's two main notes. There's violet leaf and there's patchouli. And those two notes, I can't really think about mixing together in any other fragrances. They also use this note of mate tea um, and clary sage and pink pepper and bergamot and stuff like that. So um, this is going to be probably a little bit more mass appealing than wearing something that I love, like Givenchy Gentleman from 1974. That might put some people off because it's a little bit more animalic in the base and stuff like that. This is almost like a niche version of Givenchy Gentleman or uh, Pierre Cardin, Poor Monsieur from 72. You know, those type of old school patchouli fragrances, which I love. 
Um, so this is like a, think about a niche, more wearable version of that. If you care about that, I don't. I'll wear Givenchy Gentleman anywhere. But um, Diptyque Tempo, beautiful patchouli. And then maybe one of the most, um, every time I wear this, I'm reminded of a Guerlain. For some reason, it's probably the vanilla. But this is a fragrance called Eau Duel. And as you can see, this is also in the EDT, and this is 100 ml. So we went 50, 75, 100. Um, and this is an EDT as well. It's the white bottle. And um, again, look at the artwork. You have the Taj Mahal, which is also very Guerlain, Shalimar-esque, if you will. Um, and so Diptyque... Eau Duel is basically two main notes. It's, um, it is, um, vanilla, and you have this elemi and cardamom, and you've got olibanum, and you've got black tea, and you've got this beautiful ambergris and, and saffron, okay, with musk, and Oh, this fragrance is so beautiful. Um, but it's the mixture of bourbon vanilla with that LME oily cardamom. And then you have this very relaxing black tea. Oh, it's so good. Um, so the LME and olibanum tend to complement each other really well. Um, so think about... The two notes, the two accords that you can think about when you look at that note listing is it's vanilla and incense. And the incense comes from the olibanum and the elemi. And then it's kind of backed up by this, by this beautiful tea note. So vanilla and incense are a winning combination to, to, to my way of thinking. Uh, Zadig and Voltaire, this is him by Nathalie Lorson is almost like a designer version. And this is almost like a niche version of that idea of vanilla and incense. And it's like a duel, au duel. Who's gonna win the duel, vanilla or incense? And um, gorgeous, I love this fragrance. It's simple, but it's so well done. And there's beautiful, um, there's supposedly a beautiful ambergris note in the dry down. I don't know if I always get it, but um, they claim it's there, so I'll take their word for it. Okay, and then the last one. Now, if you like fragrances like Layton, you should try to put this on your list. If you like mass appealing um, fragrances, this is one to definitely check out. This is a fragrance called 34 Boulevard Saint Germain. And there you go. There's the top where it says it. So this is the named after the um, this is named after the address of the Diptyque headquarters, which brands are known to do. Hermes does the same thing, um, and so this is I like the presentation here because so there's kind of the um, information, if you will, and then it's a magnetic cap. Uh, I really like this presentation. I got the EDP here. Be Excuse me, because I just thought it was a little bit, um, it was a little bit stronger and a little bit more, uh, had a little bit more oomph to it. The EDT just felt a little bit thin, but if you like mass appealing niche fragrances, like for example, I mentioned, if you like fragrances like Layton or Ventus, let's say, you have to get your nose on, on this because this is a, uh, fragrance in that same idea but it's something that not everyone is wearing. So this starts off with this very common pink pepper and citruses, and then it goes into this uh, floral thing, which might put some guys off because there's iris, violet, geranium, rose, and tuberose. But if you give it a chance, you'll notice that it also has some very masculine notes. There's cinnamon and clove, and then there's also uh, sandalwood and amber and vanilla but it never goes disgustingly sweet. So it kind of walks the line of very mass appealing without being too sweet. Uh, and 
it's a very well-made fragrance. For such a mass appealing fragrance, this is very well-made. They only sell these in 75 ml. You can kind of see the bottom of the bottle there. Well, I don't know, are you supposed to put it on its top? I don't know how you're supposed to sit this thing. But um, absolutely gorgeous, very, again, easy to wear. This video is almost all about easy to wear fragrances. Um, Encre Noir is at the beginning, which isn't even on the list. I'll do a different family portrait for Lalique one day. Um, might be a little challenging, but most of the stuff mentioned today should be relatively easy to wear. Uh, Volutes and Tempo. If you're not a patchouli lover, Tempo is going to be tough for you. This next one is the only one from this house, and that's why I wanted to, um, I wanted to include it. Did my camera just go sideways? What's going on here? Let's see if I can fix you. Okay, um, so this is the only one from this house that I have, and this is a fragrance from Ormond Jane, and it's called Ormond Jane or Ormond Man. Um, they also do Ormond Woman, so it comes with this sleeve. All right, so it kind of sits in this little sleeve with the batch code on the bottom right there right there and or right there let's see can i even show you this properly come on ramsey there you go there's the batch code um and so the sleeve pops off you got your ingredients on the back uh and it comes in this little coffin type thing that's magnetic kind of cool uh and it sits in there and you get this little book and this came out 18 years ago this is a giza shown creation and I think he does, he's done a lot of the Ormond fragrances. So this is another very easy to wear niche fragrance. It's considered a woody spicy by Fragrantica. I hate those woody spicy. Um, but it that's actually a pretty good comparison. So the notes according to the little booklet that they give you is juniper berry, bergamot, pink pepper, cardamom, and coriander seed with a heart of oud and black hemlock. So there's your selling point. It's got dangerous black hemlock in it. Um, and then the base is vetiver, cedar, sandalwood, and musk. And um, it says that Ormond for men, a fragrance most sophisticated, despite its unconventional ingredients, complex and full of character, sultry and mystical, the fragrance exudes soft woody notes, but it is the infusion of oud oil, the world's most prized essence since time immemorial, that sets it apart, elevating the scent to one of true distinction. This enigmatic creation epitomizes the audacious innovation of Ormond Jane's first perfume for men. It's so sensual, you may just have to surrender yourself. Wow. Um... I don't think I've ever actually read that, especially not out loud, but um, the bottle looks like this. Um, decent presentation, and the, the, the selling point on this is black hemlock, which I have no clue what that smells like, to be honest with you. It almost smells like a cypress-type plant, um, and then you get this pink pepper, which Ormond Jane does pink pepper in a very unique way. Um, their pink pepper almost smells like nothing else you would come across. And then this oud that's in there, which who knows if they say it's real, we'll say it's real oud. Um, I never would have guessed if you smell this and you didn't know there was oud in this, I would guess very few people would actually say there's oud in it. Um, and, but it's all about the woods. This is a cedar, sandalwood, vetiver, base, and musk. And it's, you can wear this anytime, anywhere. I usually wear this in the summer. Um, just because it's not really going to offend, even though it's oud, it's not, it's not oud, like oud maximus or something. And, um, you know, I'll do a full review of this one day once I give it some more wears. I've only worn it once or twice. Um, I haven't really put a dent in the bottle. Uh, but one of those easy to wear niche fragrances that, uh, it's niche because that's all Ormond Jane does. But I, if you would have put this under my nose and said... Ramsey, what is this? I'm, I would have probably said it's a creed. You know, it's a it's an easy-to-wear, simplistic, um, you know, creed fragrance. 
So Ormond Jane for men. So there's our family portrait. These got lumped together just out of necessity. Um, let me know if you have experience with them. Uh, or my scent of the day. I think this is, uh, this will be, this will be worth a full review one day because I love this stuff. One of my favorite tobacco fragrances of all time. And then I at least got to write the wrong of Ancre Noir. How could I leave this off the vetiver list? How did I not own a bottle? Um, okay, so there you have it. Um, 35 minutes. We're going to cut it short for a Ramsey video. So cheers. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.